It begins early. During their high school years, 14, 15, 16 year olds volunteering for service projects, helping out in nursing homes, teaching young kids to read after school, even just picking up paper at a local park. The work is hard, but the personal rewards are great. And soon, these teenagers seek out more opportunities to serve. As college approaches and their professional dreams take shape, these young people recognize that they are being called to serve the world in particular ways. Some want to teach, others to heal. And each year, dozens of these young people come to LaGrange College. Stay with us for the next few minutes as we meet 10 LaGrange College students who are working to become teachers, nurses, doctors, or human rights professionals. Meet 10 Who Care on this edition of LaGrange College Presents. LaGrange College Presents. Ten Who Care, LaGrange College students who are models of excellence, students who naturally demonstrate courage, kindness, love, service, and sacrifice. Students like Hannah Williams. Last year, Hannah found one of her greatest challenges while studying overseas when she was hired to teach English to German students in Spain. I'm from Greenville, South Carolina, and I came to LaGrange College because my dad and I were looking up colleges that um, would fit me best. I did a study abroad program. I went to Valencia, Spain. We did a history and geography course of Spain, and that allowed us to travel to the major cities and see the major areas. So we covered Spain from the 700s BC till present day. I also did an internship with an elementary school there. So I did an internship with a German elementary school teaching English to Spanish students. That was the part that I enjoyed the most, was getting to see each student progress. They often called me Hannah Montana, because Hannah's not a very popular name in Spanish. So anywhere I went and I introduced myself, they would say, oh, Hannah Montana. I said, yes. I've always been pretty independent, but I guess you realize what what things you hold close to you because I had roommates and I had classmates who were very very different from me and we came from different family backgrounds and so when we would have conversations and talk about just everyday life then we had very different views and so that taught me a lot of where my morals were and things that I would look for later in life and things that I would build upon that might be different from the people that I encountered. When she was growing up in her native Sierra Leone, Daphne Doherty's goal was to find one good meal every day. Today, with that same perseverance, her goal is to earn a nursing degree at LaGrange College and return to her home country to help children find the best in themselves. I love caring for people, so as a natural caregiver, I think nursing was the perfect fit for me. I want to be a nurse practitioner, that's my ultimate goal, and I want to go back home to Sierra Leone because little girls out there do not have the dream of education. I was raised to cook and clean, and I'm so grateful to have acquired those skills as a mom and a wife, but education should be the priority, and that's what I want to take back home to the children, is to tell them, you know, this isn't it for you. You, you have to want to learn something and want to be somebody, and the kids back home do not have that dream. Their goal is to just get a, a good meal every day, and that was my goal too, growing up. You know, but as I moved away and traveled a lot, I've I visited maybe about 15 countries so far and you get to learn that just inspiring people and you you can teach them by your examples you can't just tell them do this and I'm a mom you know and but I know that education is really important to me so I can't go back home telling them to want to be somebody and I have nothing to show for it my husband's a registered nurse so I know when I tell people that, they say, yeah, you have a study buddy, but not quite because he went through it 12, 13 years ago. So it's quite different to what I'm going through now. It's a lot of work. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie, it's emotional some days. <laughs> I have good days and bad days. And I can't believe I'm saying that only a couple of months in, but I know I have my work cut out for me. You have to prioritize a nursing school. And family's important to me, but I also, now it kinda has to go hand in hand. It's studying and family. So I'll play with my kids for a couple of minutes and then hold a book for about an hour. You kinda have to find that balance in between or you will not be successful. I know it's too soon for me to say that, but, but I really think that um, the key is just open your book when you get out of class because you don't get everything you need to understand in class. All right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm a different person today than I was August 31st, which was our first day of school. I'm a lot more driven now. I'm passionate. I'm even more passionate. I thought I loved nursing, but now just starting to know just a little. We're just getting a little glimpse of what our careers will be like. It's made me want it even more. And you, you really, you have to learn how to care for people in a holistic way. Do you know what I mean? And... With, in nursing, you have to learn how to be culturally competent. You have got to understand that people are going to be different. Appreciate the diversity in people. It's one of the most important things. And the one thing that I will walk away with, you know, from the nursing program here, I, will, I know that without a doubt, is the fact that when you're caring for someone, I don't care how old they are, if it's a child, put yourself in their position. If you would not like something done to you don't do it to another person and if you can walk away with that you'll be the greatest nurse that's that's what i'm gonna take away from this is i have to put everybody in my position when i look at children i look at my children i see my kids in them if i'm taking care of an adult male i see my husband i see my father i see my mom my grandma and if you can put people in those positions then you will be you will do just fine The third of our LaGrange College 10 Who Care is a LaGrange, Georgia native and one of the most active people on campus. An education major, Abby Hall believes that volunteering not only solves problems, but it helps you learn who you are as a person. Helps you find your voice. The road to success is not crowded, she says, because while most of us are looking for ways to take, the truly successful people are finding ways to give. Since I graduated from LaGrange High, I passed by here many times. And it was one of those things that, nope, I want to get, leave home, go away, be done. But I visited other schools, came here many times, and I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Panther Crew, I started it um, second semester of my freshman year. And we do halftime events at basketball games. We have um, free t-shirts. We do incentives just to get more students to come out to support LaGrange College. Panther Readers actually was Dr. Livingston's idea. And he said that after school, many of the children do not have parents at home to help them with their homework or to help them read their AR book. And so we go in um, after school and we sit down with them and we read. It may be their favorite book, we may help them with their homework. We just try to help them see how important reading is to, to us and to make that same importance to them. I want to get a master's in PR, um, in public relations, because it, I promise it works together. Um, because I want to either work behind the scenes with like marketing, communications, um, I like radio, TV, that type deal. And even if I don't work with that, I get my master's in it, I can still teach in a high school teaching marketing or a speech class or communications. So it all goes hands in hand. Somewhere it goes together. <laughs> I'm actually the first person in my family to complete, go to college and complete college. Um, and my parents always instilled in, I have a younger brother and he's 14, they always instill in us to do something better. Show people that you know that you can be somebody. Don't stop with the norm. At first I thought it was going to be a big deal about going to college because I didn't come from a lot of money. and. I think that's one of the things I like about LaGrange too. Financial aid is they're like my best friend probably because they work with you. They look at you from senior year, junior year, all the way up and they're always looking for ways.
to give you money. Even if it's like, I mean, I got a scholarship from the most random places in LaGrange. And that was due to LaGrange College Financial Aid and LaGrange High. So I think that's one of the things it goes back to LaGrange College willingness to help anybody. Jesse Adamzak's name is complicated, but her mission in life is not. She wants to champion civil rights, to be a voice for people who can't speak for themselves. My mom, when I was little, um, she started this program called Street Talk, and it's where she would go to places like Publix and Kroger and get food that the sell-by date had expired. The food wasn't bad, but they couldn't legally sell it anymore. And she arranged with them to kind of organize a drive, and then she would take it to the, the streets of Atlanta and give it to homeless and homeless shelters. And she ran Bible studies in those kind of project neighborhoods, and I started helping her with that when I was 13. So when I was 14, I went and built houses in Mexico with my church, so that's always been a key part of my life, is helping the lesser man. I was an English major, and after about a year of that, I switched to religion and philosophy because I fell in love with David Ahern's classes. And he's been like a father to me, so I, I didn't want to leave the department, so I didn't. I just stayed. I do on campus. I'm involved with the Scroll, that's the literary magazine here. Um, I'm president of ODK, that's Omicron Delta Kappa, it's the Leadership Honor Society. I was inducted last year and then became president the same year, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I'm events coordinator for the Gay Student Alliance here. I founded it when I was a sophomore, me and my friend did. And um, I was president for about a year and then I dropped down to events coordinator because I became president of ODK. Um, I work. I was part of the Hilltopper, I've written some articles for that, so mostly just studying and all my extracurriculars, and I work off campus too, I'm a nanny. I started with them when my oldest, she's about to turn nine, I worked with them every afternoon for three years, and so I taught her and her sister how to read, how to do math, and I, it's amazing, I'm teaching them piano right now, they can play Christmas songs, it's so cute. And I guess just doing that made me want to work with children. I love kids. I always have. And so I so decided I don't want to be a lawyer. I'd rather teach kids. Ideally, I've all, I, I really would like to be um, a part of the American Civil Liberties Union one day. That's why I was originally going to be a lawyer, so that I could do that because everything from my first papers here to my senior thesis now House, on House Bill 87, um, has always been about championing civil rights and it's extremely important to me one day that I'm involved in that somehow no matter what I do I care about people who can't take care of themselves and who don't have a voice. Matthew Hokinson is a chemistry major after graduation he plans to go to medical school and become an orthopedic surgeon so it's safe to say that science is his passion. January 2012 Jan term is in session at LaGrange College. One of the classes offered is called Water Wars, and Matthew Hokinson is there. We all have the water we need, it's just an argument of how it's distributed. Recently, I've, I've been hearing about the whole arguments over water between, our, between three states, Florida, Georgia, and um, Alabama. And it, when I saw this Jan term, I kind of initially wrote it off. I'm like, eh, sounds interesting, but I don't know what I want. And then as I kept looking at it, I kept coming back to it. Lake Lanier contributes to the water downstream here. And then the big trip, of course, for this Jan term is we're going down to the Apalachicola River Basin. The oysters there are an endangered species. And they have to have 5,000 cubic feet of water moving past them every second. So that's a $2 million industry right there uh, for 2,500 people living in that area. What they did is they created a compact basically saying, hey, in a few years we're going to discuss it which doesn't get anything done. They're just pushing it off and pushing it off. And then in 2003, it fell out. It's not in effect anymore. And now people are starting to argue about it again and keep pushing it off and pushing it off. And nothing's ever going to get done about it because no one wants to put their foot down or they keep 
passing um, laws or suing each other and getting different rulings and stuff. So it's more biology based, but I mean, I've always been interested in just science in general. And I actually wanted to go to med school and become an orthopedic surgeon. I'm a football player. I figure as an orthopedic surgeon, I can help people and still help and be involved in athletics because a lot of the orthopedic surgeons responsibilities are athletes who mess knees up, shoulders up, things like that. And I just I just feel like that will be pretty cool that I can still stay involved with athletics with my career and go from there. Stephanie Fowler earned her biology degree from LaGrange College and plans on teaching high school. In order to better prepare for the job, she signed up for a Jan term course that allowed her to get up close and personal with a dozen animal species that she never seen before. The trip actually, I feel, will be really beneficial to me teaching. My name is Stephanie Fowler and I just finished up my last semester getting my biology degree here and I'm currently in the MAT program um, working to be a high school teacher. We went to Atlanta on Friday, the, um, January 6th, and we flew from Atlanta to Miami and from Miami to Quito, Ecuador. We were able to go on hiking and snorkeling adventures and see all these animals and vegetation that we had learned and studied about um, prior to going on the trip. Well, I think my favorites were the sea lions. Um, after taking about a thousand pictures the full week and looking back, I probably had close to 600 pictures of just the sea lions. Hiking, we saw many, many different kinds of birds that are only found in the Galapagos. Um, the most famous there are the blue-footed boobies, which actually have um, feet the color of, I, I don't even have anything to compare it to, very, very bright blue. We were actually lucky and able to see the waved albatross, which is only found on Espanola Island at a certain time of year. And I think within the next week, those will be gone. So we were lucky to catch them there that week. We snorkeled with sharks, white-tipped sharks. I mean, <laughs> you name it, we saw it. We saw animals and plants there that we wouldn't, we wouldn't see anywhere else in the world. And I think that if I can relay that message to my students and you know, hopefully one day take a, my, a class of my own there, then that'd be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> the next of our 10 Who Care is Sarah Gobin, a senior biochemistry and pre-pharmacy major. At LaGrange College, Sarah's big thing has been hands-on research. She wants to help develop the next cure come up with new dosage forms and specifications, assist in clinical trials. In short, Sarah Gobin wants to put her considerable talents to work helping people. I was born in Virginia Beach and then we moved to Hawaii where my brother was born and then to Kansas City and back to Virginia and then down here. My dad's in the military, but right now he's stationed in Albany, Georgia and I graduated from high school down there. My mom was a physician and for a long time I wanted to be a physician, but then I realized I did not want to be a physician because I couldn't deal with you know the cadavers or um, dissecting things. And my, as my brother cleverly pointed out, if I was a good doctor I wouldn't have to deal with dead bodies but still it was a turn off. <laughs> I had never heard of it before and they sent me a pretty postcard. I was like, well that looks nice, I'll go visit. And I really like the sense of community and I like that. I wanted to know the people around me. I wanted to, at sense, be home. I'm a member of the Honor Council. I am a leader of GOBS, which is our girls only Bible study, and a member of Hilltoppers, which is our student ambassador program for people who come to visit. And I don't know, I kind of help out here and there. If I see something cool going on, I'll jump in. I ride and train horses. I have five horses, 
back home. I used to barrel race before I came up here. I didn't really have time to show once I got up here, but I did manage to train and break a little colt that was given to me by a friend. You know, I just enjoy being around them. After graduation, I'm going to Belmont School of Pharmacy in Nashville, Tennessee. President Mick Alexander, he is actually came to us from Belmont School and he helped establish the pharmacy school and he was able to write a letter for me and call the school and they all knew him and when I showed up for my interview, uh, the head of the department approached me directly and, oh, Dan McAlexander called about you, we're so excited to meet you. So that was really cool. Uh, well, I really like Belmont because it is a new program, so they're a little more open to change and willing to try new things out and a lot more eager to get their feet wet in different areas, new areas, maybe less conventional. And all their equipment is brand new and it's all very high end, so that's very neat as well. But Nashville actually has a small LaGrange College colony. And I have a lot of friends up in Nashville, so that was a big draw too, that I could go up there and live with people I know and just continue those relationships that I've made here. Hill Daniel's future is in psychology, but not in a talk to me about your problems sort of way. He's thinking about becoming a high school psychology teacher. Uh, my name is Hill Daniel. I'm a junior here at LaGrange College. I'm a psychology major. I, I was just really interested in the field. Um, things that deal with the brain, I'm really interested in the brain. I've been taking a lot of biology too. Um, so a lot of brain structures and a lot of the problems with the brain has really kept me interested in the subject. For this Jan term, I took neurological imaging. Uh, it is required by the psychology department. You have to look at one of your four years, but um, we studied a lot of the MRIs and we're trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to, to use therapy to help this person uh, overcome what's happened during their stroke. I pledged in the uh, fall of 2009 to the Alpha Delta Gamma chapter here at the college. Um, I've done a lot through that, and I'm actually the vice president at the moment for the fraternity. And, trying to do a lot of them the national scene. I'll be heading up to St. Louis on the 25th of this month to uh, participate in the spring uh, leadership conference that we're having. I'm the vice president of the Senate for the Student Government Association and I'm one of the presidential ambassadors that they started then. Um, you know, along with that, I'm helping out one of my fraternity brothers coach a uh, local club soccer team here at in Troop County, the Troop County Titans. Um, me and my brother were coming back home late one night and I was driving down a gravel road, ended up fish tailing and flipped the Jeep on uh, top of me and him. So I crushed the driver's side. His side was fine. He had a little cut behind his ear and I ended up uh, splitting my T2 and T3 vertebrae. So I pinched the spinal cord and kept the signals from going down. Yeah, it really isn't too bad. I mean, it's just figuring out how to get around. It's not too bad. You know, I've always had you know big goals for myself. So the past three years I've been in this wheelchair. I really haven't tried to let it hold me back. I feel like I've done more in the past three years than I have you know, the first 17. Letitia Gilliam never imagined when she began college that she would one day study photography in Europe. But that's exactly what the senior nursing major did this past January, as she and two other nursing majors put down their medical textbooks and experienced Greece through a camera lens. I work at Florence Hand as a licensed practical nurse, and we give medications, do patient care. Not saying that working in a nursing home is not fun or where it's at, but I feel like your experience is limited. And so I decided that I would just come to LaGrange, just right here where I can drive home when I need to, and I can get to school when I need to, and I can work, continue to work full time. When I first started thinking about becoming an RN, I was dead set on labor and delivery. I've always wanted to do labor and delivery nursing, but I did my clinical at labor and delivery, and I realize that maybe it's not just that I want to do so even though some people think medical surgical nursing is the hardest and the worst nursing to do that's what I think I want to do 
time management with being a mother, a student, and an employee has to be the hardest thing ever. There are times when I feel like I'm just going to explode from all of the stress combined, but with the luck of having a great employer, they allowed me to go to a PRN status, and I still work weekends, but I have a great mother at home. I have a great support system at home. The professors here, they are wonderful whether it's just to be that shoulder to cry on, just the ear to listen, just to vent to them, they're, they're there. And that's something that I found to be a great, I guess a great help in making, making it through this program because this is a hard program. And there gets to be times when you feel like I could just pull my head off my shoulders and just walk away from it because that's how tough it is. But they teach you from the start that it's not easy but it's doable. Jan term we took a trip to Greece and once in Athens, the first couple of days was sightseeing and we went to a lot of ancient ruins. Um, one of my favorite was um, Mount Olympia. We went to see the first Olympic Stadium and we also went to the island of Crete which is the largest island of Greece and we stayed there a couple of nights. From here, even though there's a lot of things that I've gotten to do here that I wouldn't at any other school. I think just the opportunity to travel because I'm not a traditional student and just just having that opportunity just made me realize that there's more to life than just here, the here and now. Like many other young people on this list, Meldra Hall believes that what she learned in her classes at LaGrange College are important, but at the same time, getting out there through community service can help her experience things that she might not learn otherwise. I'm a resident advisor. I'm part of the O team. I am an Alpha Omicron Pi. I'm a presidential student ambassador. Right now, service president of Phi Eta Omega, and I'm on the honor council. I have been a presidential student ambassador this year, and I got to get to know the president and go to different like donor occasions with him. And so that was a very nice benefit to like have your president know your name, you know? And like just being an RA with Dean Slay, working with him, um, being on the O team, having him take us to lunch, that was very nice. <laughs> I did an internship with a cardiologist this Jan term and it was the best experience I've had so far. It was at Southern Cardio with Dr. Robert Copeland and I shadowed him and went from patient to patient with him. I learned that being a physician requires understanding what exactly is wrong with the patient, not necessarily ordering a lot of drugs and saying, here, let's see if this works or let's fix this. And so I had, he took a lot of time explaining what was wrong and trying to figure out exactly the symptoms and what was happening so he could have the best diagnosis and it kind of opened my eyes to what it really takes to be a physician and he connected to patients also he made sure to get on that personal level with them and I really was inspired by that the chemical processes going on, just breathing, just sitting here, all the processes that allow you to see light, the electrical impulses that allow you to feel things. Um, I love knowing that and knowing that I could help people. Um, there's so many things that could go wrong and that do go wrong. And so just being a part of helping people or increase the quality of life um, draws my passion or is my passion. LaGrange College encourages its students to seek out opportunities to serve. Seek out people in need of direction, instruction, and comfort. LaGrange College encourages its students to become people who care. <laughs>